gonna get through this. My voice is very dry today. So I pray for strength through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's get it. Devils and blocking videos bad. What I learned today was I got multiple channels. So when I switch to a different channel, I can't see a lot of you brothers' video lessons. Because the devil is blocking your channels. Or like this brother here. Where's he at? Leon Yasharala. Brother Bayan Yasharala, Shalom Barakata. I went onto your channel and all I saw was little 10 second short clips. But then I scrolled to the left and then I was able to see your videos. So this devil is blocking many of our channels and videos. And it also happened to, uh, Brother uh, Hopeful Elect, fisherman, fisherman of the Hopeful Elect, that brother. <clears throat> when I clicked on his channel, I didn't see any videos. But then I learned how to navigate on YouTube. So when I started moving the screen around, then I can see his videos. So I started sharing that brother's lesson. day and you find out you're the devil that the Bible speaks of you're gonna break the mirror you're gonna shadow the mirror and break the glass mirror mirror on the wall who is the fairest of them all it's not you you red devil <clears throat> so then you're gonna attack the truth that's being revealed and blame the damn mirror but you that nigga, that's destroying the earth. Taking down people's sovereign lands, colonizing the earth. You are the nigger of the earth, okay? The devil that the Bible speaks of. Don't attack the mirror. Look inside at the interior. It's not the mirror, it's the interior. You that nigga. Just thought I'd share that with you. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it out. Stop attacking the truth. Attack the root of the problem. If you got symptoms, you don't treat the symptoms. You get the root of that sickness. What's causing me to be sick? Check your diet. What are you consuming? What are you digesting? How you doing, man? your initial life. How much you know about the truth? You don't know? They've blocked our videos on YouTube. They've taken down our videos. You ever heard of shadow banning? That's what they're doing to our videos. Who is Esau in the Bible? Esau? That's the white man. Or, yeah, yo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's him. So that's the devil in the Bible. They're Romans, Greeks. Let me let this train go by. So when the Bible's talking about Esau, it's talking about Edom, Rome. There's no such thing as, as white people. That's a made up social construct. Nobody's the color of this right here. So when you hear white, that mind, this is Nate, this is not a people right here. Nobody's black. That's not a nationality. Now, many of us come from that area. That's why they named that country Niger or Niger. 
it means dark skin. Like Nigeria comes from Niger or Nigeria, which means dark skin. But that's not a nationality. There's no such thing as white people. When you hear white, it mind fucks you. Because white represents what? Purity. Thank you. You got it. Wholeness. Purity. So if I tell you I'm white, I'm going to mind fuck you. The moment you see me, you're going to be ready to put me on a pedestal. I can't bother him. He's white. You see, it, there's magic in words. That's why when you write, I spell. You spell. So you're casting enchantment based on your language. So when you read the Bible, you come under a, a righteous level of understanding, enchantment on the righteous side. So you can see wickedness and pick it up real quick. This is Pride Month. The Lord is against Pride Month. The Lord is against a man acting like a woman, woman becoming a man. That's unrighteous. But the people that are doing it told you that they're this. You see? So once you get mind screwed, you fall in love with the one that sodomized you. You see that? <laughs> you become, um, you ever heard of, um, what is it called? When you're held captive, you fall in love with the captors. What is that called? Stockholm Syndrome. You get Stockholm Syndrome. The people that took me captive, mind fuck me, they love me. Because they're feeding me, they're giving me water, food. So you fall in love with the one that took your mind and body captive. Stockholm Syndrome. That's why they're attacking our videos. I'm on my sixth channel. I've had over 3,000 videos taken down. But I'm going to go ahead and bring it out. I'm on live stream. Yeah, I'm on YouTube. Hey, give me your cell number. And I'm going to text you my uh, video. I'm going to get ready to bring it out. What I'm going to do is text you my video. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to say channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. I'm on my sixth channel. Hey, uh, let me, uh... You just show me your videos. Okay, let me do that then. Uh, Check this how out. How can I find it on YouTube? It's shadow band, bro. That's what I'm telling you. It's going to be hard to find it. Nah, just tell me. I'll find it. Okay, if let me do it. you subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah, they still shadow band. Let me try Because I've shared it with family members. They still can't find it. Let me try it. But, oh, and what they'll do is they'll unsubscribe you. So even after you subscribe, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, I'm, subscribe. I'm, I'm familiar with the Shadow Band. You know about Shadow Band? Yeah, yeah. That's me right there, live. I just clicked on it and then click subscribe. But I got three other backup channels. Because they're going to Shadow Band it and then they're going to unsubscribe you. Look, see this sign? The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos are the children of God, the children of Israel. We've been told that we're just black or we're Negro. So we're scattered into all nations, Ethiopia, Europe, Asia, you see, Eritrea, uh, Egypt, Libya. Where's Eritrea? Which tribe are they? Eritrea, well, we're scattered. So a lot of them probably come from um, Judah and Gad. But we're scattered into all nations. So the way we know each other is by the spirit. I can't look at you and say, you're not my people. But if you're offended by a spiritual word, then that means then you're outside of the temple. This is a spiritual doctrine. Hey, hey, so Seth. Esau is against this Bible. You see? So that's how we know each other by the spirit. Because you can't look at somebody and know who they are or what they're about. Yeah. And I'm gonna bring it out, bro. But yeah, this is this is what happened to us. The children of Israel. They're not teaching this. Mm -hmm. See? So the children of Israel fell by the Romans, Esau, Edom. In what year? 70 AD. Where they took down Jerusalem. 
and the Israelites fell and were scattered and sold into slavery. They're not teaching this yeah. in the religious institutions. It's half your congregation to walk out. That's what. So we the people on the boat. I gotta get out of here, brother. All right, I'm man. Gonna follow you as but I you're get right. That's here. Esau, Edom, Romans, Greeks. That's the devil in the Bible. All right, bro. Take it easy. Well, we got to get rid of the Stockholm Syndrome. Falling in love with our captors. That told us he loved us. That told us he didn't mean to kill us. Slaughter us. Put us in slavery. Make us first fire. Last hire. I love you. Let me give you a job. <laughs> hey, put on a suit and tie. And I'm going to show you I love you. I'm going to make you a corporate leader. Make you the chief executive eight of the year. And put your black up. And call you the chief man of our corporation. Then you get around your brothers. You got an attitude. You hate this brother. You against this brother. He robbed you the wrong way. And you're showing all your teeth at the plantation. The Most High is going to eliminate two thirds of you fake Israelites, easily offended by the brotherhood. But when you go to the plantation, you're shining all your teeth, baking cookies and cakes, making Starbucks runs, bringing goodies to work. You're comfortable being two-fifths or three-fifths of a man. Comfortable being a corporate institution man or institutionalized. Let's go into the word. <coughs> Let's get it. We're going to go to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Or Ephesians 4. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ephesians, chapter 4. Let's go to verse. We're going to go to the top. I, therefore, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So this is our craft, our vocation. Let's look that word up. Vocation. Like vocational school. Vocation. Vocation. My iPad is acting up. I need nothing but the devil. Yeah, it won't let me type it in. Can somebody please post the definition of vocation? It won't let me type it in.
I gotta get that definition of vocation. We're breaking down the mysteries of the kingdom. We're breaking down the past, present, and future. This is our artwork. This is our skill set. We gotta be able to traverse in rear gear, the past. We gotta be able to navigate in the present. And we have to be able to project and move into a vision, a new model, the way ahead, the future. Prophecy means to say before. With all lowliness and meekness. Where's vocation at? I can get that definition, please. Every time I start teaching, it gets more windy. It was not windy like this till I start talking. Spirits get revved up. Yeah, what's the definition of vocation? Let me try it again. Man, I gotta pray for patience. Yeah, it won't let me do it. This is absolutely unbelievable. <clears throat> the definition of vocation. Won't let me do it. How many can hear me out there to put the uh, definition of vocation? I therefore the prisoner of the Lord right here a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation let's go to that let's go to that exactly let's get that so this is a skill set a profession One moment. Somebody post that. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Occupy till I come. Let's see if I can find that. Dude, they're messing with my iPad. I can't pull up anything. Occupy till I come. You have got to be kidding me. If somebody can post that, occupy till I come. Yeah, here it is. Beautiful. Brother Adam Nana Shalom Barakatha. Luke 19 and 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. So this is our occupation. Not corporate America, where we're showing all our teeth. We got more tolerance. For what we don't like, we're working the job we're not happy with, but we're still showing all our teeth. So suffering your co-workers and not your brothers, not your spiritual family. That's wicked. Doing the work is our occupation. Prophesying, teaching, preaching. Let's go back to the, the brother, the, the watchers. Voca vocation, strong feeling 
or suitability for a particular career or occupation. So when Yahweh Shai said, occupy till I come, he's talking about do the work, preach, teach. Let's go here. See? Let's go to Matthew 10. The book of Matthew chapter 10. Verse 5. These 12, Yehoshai, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of of these Samaritans into ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Occupy. This is our occupation. To teach the word. To be instant in season. Out of season. But we rather go to work go to the plantation all our time all our work and energy is at the plantation so we're occupied in this world our heart and mind is invested in wall street in stocks and bonds gold and silver we have to invest our heart mind and time into the kingdom. See? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. <clears throat> How do we heal the sick? By teaching by being diligent. This word kills us. Our position. See, let me get that. Let's go to uh, Psalms 107. The devil is hurt. I've never seen these videos mess with this bad. Never. How do we heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead? Let's go to Psalms 107, verse 19. Then they, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and healed them. So the word casts out devils and heals us, cleanses us. <coughs> Gotta leave off from our sin. Go back to Ephesians. These spirits are wrapped up. Man. Ephesians 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all holiness and meekness with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. So when you were at the workplace, you forbear your co-workers. You hated a couple of them. You despised a couple of them. But you still did your job, occupied, or occupation. You still fulfilled your mission. So we got to cherish the work of the ministry over the work in the world. 
No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or love the other and hate the one. So get out of the institutional mindset of the world and be washed and born again into the institution of the ministry. Man, let's visit the common board. Cause it's on fire. Man, they're messing with our videos bad. This man is the devil. One moment. Own their own video with Shadow Band. I can't get to it. Man, I'm getting irritated. Okay, I'm gonna have to come up close. Can't get to my own video. Brother Bakiyar Yasharala. First John 2 and 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abide in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is the truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher, but that Holy Spirit has to be nourished by living waters and the light. So it's got to be gifted to us. But we still have to have, okay, if you have a seed, you put that seed in the dirt. But without fountains of living waters, it's, it's going to die or not grow. So it needs the light of the Holy Spirit and the waters of life. So those waters have to flow through. We got to have Garden, gardeners that tend to the field, that tend to the garden, that go out and water the seed, water the plants. The plants is a metaphor of the elect, the fine clusters, the vintage vines, the noble vines. So the gardeners are the prophets, teachers, a garden has to be till, till the field. Okay, they won't let me get on my comment board. Man, this devil is hurt. Wow. Let's go back to Ephesians 4. See? Ephesians 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. This is why we teach every day. The spirit has to flow. Don't quench the spirit. Somebody post that one. Because it won't let me do it on here. I think it's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. The garden has to be watered. The garden garden has to be watered daily. So the Bible says, don't quench the spirit. Prophecy has to go out daily. A word. If not, the garden dries out and dies. You're not going to reap the harvest. No tomatoes. No cucumbers. No watermelon. So this constant chilling is going forth. Laborers constantly laboring and tilling the field. Let me try something. My irritation is very high right now. It won't let me um let me get my Bible. I mean this is ridiculous. 
I need your help, brothers. They won't let me um pull up scriptures. Yeah, here it is. Right here. Yeah, Esau is the damn devil. We still got Israelites saying that the devil must be saved. Most High is going to kill you if you're doing that. Here we go. Thank you. Brother Beyond Yasharala. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Beautiful. So the waters got to be a constant flow. When you look at a pond in the backyard, a man-made pond, when you look around it, you see dead fish. You see dead shrubbery. You see a lot of death. It's not flowing like a river of water gushing through where you see greenery springing out all around it. The greenery represents a kingdom being developed, spawn out of living waters. See, Brother Shapal the Twelve, Shalom Barakatha. One moment, and train go by. Everything in Edom is confusion, straight confusion. Brother Shapal the Twelve. Luke 10, verse 2. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that ye would send forth laborers into the harvest. So what are we doing? We're building a kingdom and working diligently to reap the harvest, the end of the world, where Jacob is planted as an eternal noble vine, an eternal noble kingdom. See, let's get this. Somebody post that in Isaiah 50, I think it's 51, I will plant the heavens. One moment. I want to get this one. It takes me longer, but they're messing with my iPad. Here we go. Psalms. See, right here. I'm going to go to Psalms, chapter 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. When you cut off the springs to the garden, you're messing up your harvest. You're not going to get those tomatoes, those cucumbers, the watermelons, the onions, the green peppers. So rivers of living water must continue to flow through your garden. The garden is a metaphor for the nation of Jacob. See? Watch this. Psalms 1 verse 3 And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit 
that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So prosperity is not at your occupation at corporate America. Prosperity is not your job, not your everyday job. It's the ministry, the vocation of the spirit of edification. Edify means to build. So we are the laborers, shepherds, planters, gardeners for the kingdom of Idon, Eden, paradise, which is Jacob, the kingdom to come. So that means what? Adam must be coming soon. Was not Adam given dominion over Eden, paradise, the kingdom? So Yahweh Shai is Adam. That means he's near. When you see the garden of the kingdom of Jacob being planted, that means Adam, which is Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, is near. Oh, somebody ain't listening. Somebody is not listening. Let's keep going. They messing with the dead on the iPad. So the Spirit said, bring your Bible today. Bring your Bible. So I got my Bible, devils. Psalms 1. Book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So the Lord is going to raise up a destroying wind pursuant to Jeremiah 51 verse 1. A destroying wind is going to drive away the wicked. The Lord is going to cast out of his garden all things that offend. Do not we read that? So that's Adam, Yahweh Shai. He's going to cleanse the weeds. All the weeds have to be pulled up, plucked up by the roots, and cast into the furnace. See, I can't move as fast with the, uh, hard copy one moment Yeah, let's go here. Matthew 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 13. Let's go to verse 33. So Yahweh Shai is talking about his garden, his kingdom. Matthew 13, verse 33. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid 
in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. So a little leaven spoiled the whole lump. So that means everybody has to be purged. All the impurities got to be purged out. False doctrine, hatred towards another brother, idolatry. Let's jump down. Matthew 13. Let's go to verse 37. Matthew 13, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, Adam, Yahawashai. Jacob is the good seed. Elect. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Edomites. Devil comes from the Greek. Diablos. Deceivers. Slanderers. False accuser. Devil means deceiver. Slanderer or false accuser. Those are the tares. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. This is where I wanted to go. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. When you hear end of the world, remember second address six and nine. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Wow, that just jumped out at me. That just jumped right out at me. Wow. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. That's why it says, Edom shall be a desolation, and Babylon shall be as Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's talking about the end of an age, the end of an eon. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. That's where I wanted to go. All praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh So the wicked is going to be cast out. The Edomites and the two thirds Israelites on this side. That's why Zechariah 13 and 8 says, It shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. See, the Bible fits together if it's taught properly. Let's go back. Wow. This is heavy. You jump to the comment board. Yep. Shalom, Brother Sagala. Isaiah 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fits it and gathered out the stones. Woo! <laughs> Hey, so you know what? Hey, that's the spirit. You notice how there's a firewall built up where if you're not amongst 
a hopeful elect. You can't get to the videos. You can't see them. So the Lord is drying up the rivers, the waters, the word. So the garden is getting nourished, watered, but everybody else is being left out, outside of the temple. But the king's courtyard has living waters running in the king's court, his garden. You, you don't think the king liked to eat? The king wants those tomatoes, those cucumbers, those onions, those green peppers. So the elect have obtained it and the rest were blinded. Notice we read, he shall cast out. See, wait a minute. So Yahweh Shai is doing the bidding of the father, the uh, gardener, taking out the stones, the weeds, the tares. Let's read that again. Brother Sagala, Barakim, Isaiah 5, verse 1. Now, now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. The moment we hear beloved is a trigger for the elect. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, teaching every day, creating teachers which create teachers, a fruitful hill, teaching the truth. So the seeds are multiplying and creating an exceeding great army, the stars of heaven. And he fence it and gather out the stones. Beautiful. Brother Mahalala, Yahuda, Isaiah 58, verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. I love it. So the king is going to be fed. He's going to reap a harvest of his fine garden. He's going to sift the elect. He wants his fine grapes. Why? because he likes his vintage wine. He wants the meat in due season. Brother Shapa of the 12, Revelations 14, verse three. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So those are the leaders, the governors of the kingdom to come. I heard a misinterpretation that that just means 144,000 is going to be saved. No, that's talking about the new governors, the new tabernacle, which is the new holy government, the new holy mountain, which means government. Brother Arya Cha'ayal, James 3 and 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. So you either is or you ain't. No tree, no good tree can bring forth bad fruit. No bad tree can bring forth good fruit. So fresh water is pure doctrine. It gets into pure doctrine. You can't mix salt water with fresh water. The fish that are raised up or cultivated in salt water will die in fresh water. Fresh water fish cannot live in salt water so we cannot mix the profane with the clean 
That's why the Lord said, I have severed you. I have separated you. Touch not the unclean. Somebody post Sirach 13. I think it's verse 1 and 2. Touch not the pitch. Brother Arya. Chaya. James 3 and 11. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works. Meekness of wisdom. So this is not about trying to outdo another brother. We're building in the same temple. Stones, lively stones, tightly packed together. One of the characteristics of wisdom is meekness and humility. The unwise are proud. Remember, Obadiah, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So pride is a demonic characteristic. Lowly, a low spirit. Like, which I mean, when I say lowly, it means um, ungrateful, puffed up with pride, but low in wisdom. Wow. See, this is it right here. Brother Shapav the 12, Sirach 13, verse 1. He that toucheth pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. The Spirit led me there. Wow. See? So you're, have, you're taking on the characteristics of the devil. Demonic spirits. When a brother looks down on another brother. Or if you can't receive correction. You got to be always right. That's the devil. Esau. So you are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father, ye will do. So the scriptures flow together like water. Wow. Brothers, Shapav the 12, he that toucheth pitch. Somebody post that. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. So we got to be separate, which means holy. Shapav the 12, Sirach 13 and 1. He that toucheth pitch shall be defiled therewith, and he that hath fellowship with a proud man shall be like unto him. So if you're proud, it leads to what? Malice, envy, jealousy, murder. You think you're better than me. <laughs> See? So it's a slippery slope. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Malice, envy, pride, can't be corrected. You know every damn thing. Then you start developing your own doctrine. Man-made bullshit. See, it's a slippery slope. Sirach 13 and 2. Burden not thyself above thy power while thou live and have no fellowship with one that is mightier and richer than thyself for how agree the kettle and the earthen pot so the rich man is Edom are the tares are the wicked Edomites brother Adam Nana Shalom Barakata 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 wherefore Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, 
and I will receive you. Beautiful. So holy means separate. Man, I love it. So when you can tell somebody is not in the truth when they're easily offended, you know, when it comes to doctrine, especially amongst brothers. But that same Negro was at his job smiling around co-workers that he don't like, don't agree with, don't get along with. But he'll come around the brotherhood and got an attitude. Those are demonic spirits. So come out from among her and be ye separate. A spiritual detachment first leads to being ascended to masters, ascended masters, being taken up by the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Shalom, brothers Zadok, Rakata. Yep, yeah, let's read that. Surat 10 and 19. They that fear the Lord are the sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They love him an honorable plant, and they that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. Woo! So you become a degenerate plant. You were planted a noble vine. That's, uh, I think, Jeremiah 2 and 21. But become degenerate, proud, and begin to de deteriorate. Filled with pride, lust, envy, trying to make yourself better than the next lively stone. And we're all racked and stacked together as one spirit, one temple, one church. And here you are trying to outshine the other lively stones, being a nigga. Let's go back to that. That was fire. So you become like your daddy, Esau, the devil. You're not a part of us. Brothers of God, I'm wrong. House of David. 144,000 mighty men. Sirach 10, verse 19. They that fear the Lord are the pure seed. And they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. You are like your father, the devil. Sleazy, evil, eat. You're not a part of us. So we were planted a noble vine, a righteous branch, holy, separate, Brother GMS Spiritual Art, 144. Shalom, Barakatha. Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved, hardening his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. The Lord is going to cast out all things that offend, and that start with two third Israelites, the house of Saul. Brother Shapah of the Twelve, Luke 14 and 11. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be a base, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Why? Because that is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. He came and made of himself no reputation. Matter of fact, let's go to Philippians 2. Well, you can tell by the way somebody moves what level they are on. Let me say that again. 
you can tell by the way somebody moves, what level they're on. Snake, crouching tiger, monkey, see, dragon. You see, based on how they move, their character, their style. You know if you're dealing with the toad. You know if you're dealing with the parrot. Philippians 2. Let's go to verse 7. Philippians 2. Verse 7. What? Let's go to verse 6. Who being in the form of the Most High thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High. They are in agreement with one another. And he came to do the Father's will, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Walked in the flesh, suffered in the flesh, bruised for our transgressions. So we are healed by his stripes he's conquered flesh and is exalted in the spirit so we gotta kill or mortify the members of our flesh so that we can walk and grow in the spirit the flesh has to be subdued contained pride envy malice jealousy being a straight nigga stone but I can outshine you that's a nigga I'm just telling you let's keep going Philippians 2 verse 7 but made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of man meek Holy and riding on an ass and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross mortified our members kill the flesh be renewed you don't become a dragon if you're still acting like a monkey or a parrot or a toad when you stagnate you become stagnant or stagnate and stay in a, a pond an evil ease backyard a backyard pond full of flies cockroaches dead fish you become a stubborn toad and you die in your sins a grimy ass toad teaching false doctrine, old doctrine, that's dried out, see? So Yahweh Shai mortified the flesh. Peter denied him three times. What if Yahweh Shai turned on Peter and Peter denied him three times? How you think that would go over with the Most High Father. If Yahweh Shai reject Peter or go against Peter, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore the most high also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name so Yahweh Shai is going to inherit the throne the kingdom 
the right arm of the Most High is going to be exalted on the throne of his father David. One moment. And what they did was they blocked my um, iPad where I couldn't use my iPad Bible and I couldn't go on to my video on my iPad so I couldn't read your um, comments from my iPad every time I come out here spirits get revved up every time Back to Ephesians 4. Yeah, the Spirit was like, ring your Bible. Ring your Bible. Ephesians 4, verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit. And see, every time I read this, I can see the lively stones being compacted and built together. Any brother trying to outshine another brother, there's something wrong with his spirit. So if there's one spirit and one body and you're going against the body, it's not the brotherhood. It's you. The problem is you, not the body or the spirit. We're operating under Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So if you're against the one body and one spirit, you the nigga following after your father the devil. See how these spirits get revved up? Hassan's just got knocked down. So it's not the body that's off. It's you. It's you. Let's read that again. Man, these spirits are active. A page is going crazy on the Bible. Page is going crazy. That's why I like my iPad. Ephesians 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. So if the body has the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and you're against the body, and you're outside of the temple, the problem is you. You are the virus. You are the defective stone that got to be plucked out and replaced. Look what happened to uh, Judas. He was replaced by Matthias. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. Go here. To close out here, our voice is shot. Brother KMS Spiritual Art. 44 Romans 8 and 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you so just like Yahweh Shai killed the flesh sacrificed his flesh we're drinking his blood. So we're mortifying, killing the body to be exalted in the spirit and quickened, which means made alive, raised up and exalted as kings, lords, or gods on the earth. With the spirit of Yahweh Shai, 
that cannot die. Perfect and perfected as lively stones. Partaking in his body, drinking of his blood and eating of his flesh. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Romans 8 and 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. That's beautiful. Man, that's heavy. So we were purchased with a price, purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. So will a man rob God? No. We got to make our bodies a living sacrifice to pay back, to teach, to preach. That's money in the bank. So Yahweh Shai can get his return on his investment. What investment? Were purchased by the blood, the precious blood of the Lamb. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144. Romans 8 and 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the Spirit. Oh, I got another. Uh, I got excited. Let me read that again. Oh, my heart rate popped up. Now I got to take some blood pressure medication. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144. Romans 8 and 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So this is a metaphysiological change. Killing the lust of the flesh, lasciviousness, malice, envy, jealousy, rage, murder, adultery, wrath, living by the fruit of the spirit, which is connected to the vine of the root of David, an offspring. So this is a physical change to kill the mortal body, but to exalt and lift up the spirit by walking in accordance with the will of the Father. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to close. So the problem, the problem is, this is a process, and it's very easy. It's human nature to stick with what we know to get angry when we get corrected, to hate another brother when he shows that we went off on something, or to cleave to envy and wrath when another brother may have more subscribers. I mean, that's absolutely childish. This is not about running a relay race. How fast can you run? How quick can you get to the finish line? What if you get to the finish line and you're told, I knew you not, flee from me. You hate your brother. You hate correction. You hate order. So Yahweh Shai says, depart from me. I knew you not. So that is the spirit of the world on you. Yeah, you know a lot of precepts, but have not been changed have not killed the flesh of envy, wrath, jealousy, hatred. So the change starts with sacrifice, sacrificing our bodies, killing the flesh and walking in the spirit. Damn, these spirits are active today. My goodness. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Surah 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse 
to his will. Now, what does that sound like to you? Will not hearken or listen to the voice of charmers. So you take on the characteristics of the serpent, the man of sin, the son of perdition. You begin to take on the spiritual traits and characteristics and qualities of a base man, the serpent, evil E, Edom, the devil. See, a sinful man will not be reproved. And then when you read about the serpent, will not hearken or listen to the voice of charmers. So you begin to take on the characteristics of the enemy of God. That serpent goes back to what? In the Hebrew, Nakash, which means adversary of the Most High or enemy of the Most High or sorcerer. Nakash literally means sorcerer, but by default, you become adverse to the Most High or have an adversarial relationship because you're in the flesh. So you're enemies of the Most High, walking in the flesh, which is the spirit of the serpent. So to walk in the spirit is to be friends with the Most High, but to walk in the flesh is to be an adversary of the Most High. Let's close out here. Brother Shapat of the 12, Colossians 3 and 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that he hath put off the old man with his deeds, and hath put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Kill old man sleazy eat that's going to pass away for the great noise. Kill the old man. Stockholm Syndrome. And cognitive dissonance. And be renewed through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. See? So the prince of the power of this world is going to pass away. But we we obtain eternal life through the spirit of living waters, the vine, killing the body and being exalted and lifted up in a spiritual realm through the Father. He's on a high level. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So getting jealous of another brother because he's got a large following. You're in the flesh. You're taking on the characteristics of that man of sin, Cain, who slew his brother Abel because he was envious, malice, wrath. He slew Abel. So you become like your father sleazy E. Brother Shapat of the 12. Let's read that again. So the image of the Father is the Word, and the Word was made flesh. That's the image of the Father. An unspotted mirror, a spiritual reflection of the Most High. Brother Shapat of the 12. Colossians 3, verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge and after the image of him that created him. That's heavy. Brother GMS Spiritual Art, 144. Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 3. For the forward thoughts separate from the Most High and his power when it is tried. Reproveth the unwise. 
or into a malicious soul. Wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. The old shell of the flesh, which is a prison. So being carnal goes back to Cain. Since he did not please the Most High, he was wroth with the Most High. Instead of being clean on the inside, he took out his anger on the Most High through Abel. He could not kill a father because his arms was too short to box with God. So he slew his brother Abel. So that malice is a virus because the Holy Spirit is not supping with you. You take out your anger on your fellow brethren, those that are pleasing the Most High, and walking in the Spirit, the deeds of the fruit of labor and works and charity and sincerity and truth. They're doing the will of the Father. Yep, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Let's read this one. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Barakatha. 1 John 3 and 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So love is the, the essence of the Father. The moment you start going off, you begin to do what? You hate your brother. Why? He's in the image of the Father. He's in the image of Yahweh Shai. So you hate the reflection of the spiritual image of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So you take out your anger, your frustration on the sons of light, Jacob. So envy leads to hatred leads to murder brother andre serving you how shy first john 3 verse 12 not as cain not as cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous so you're trying to kill purity, righteousness. Why you think pedophiles rape children? They're trying to kill purity, righteousness. Why you think the two-third Israelites killed the prophets in the days of old? They're trying to kill righteousness. Slew Abel, slew Isaiah, slew John, slew Peter slew the prophets oh my voice is shot so hopefully this has been an edifying lesson so what happens is when somebody fall out they're really angry with the most high but they they can't get to him so they try to kill his image which starts with this doctrine purity which is holy which is righteous. So they try to fight against the Most High and they get full of envy, wrath, vengeance. They hate every damn body. Everybody's the problem but them. But in reality, if you're against the spirit of the doctrine and the brotherhood, you that nigga. I'm just telling you. A real nigga is sleazy E, but you take on the characteristics of your father, the devil and the lust of your father he will do he was a murderer from the beginning john 8 and 44 the scriptures flow together everything flows together so hopefully this lesson has been edifying shalom beloved basic wisdom beloved lady of the hopeful elect abigail proverbs brother ernest l shalom let's read this Brother Ernest L. John 15, verse 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down 
his life or his friends. Just like Yahweh Shai called us friends because he laid down his life for us. So he sacrificed his body, made his life a living sacrifice. He slew the flesh, killed the mortal man. Say what? Killed the mortal man. And now he is exalted on the right hand of the father, a exalted high level master dragon. So getting rid of the estrogen based man has to be detox. We got to detox from estrogen. You hurt my feelings, Ock. You hurt my feelings. You got to detox. You know, you got a larger following. You got to detox. Get rid of the estrogen. You think you're better than me. You got to detox. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Hashem, Rekwa Kadash. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. And pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honors to the beloved elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much love to you. Much love to you. Much love to you, beloved of the hopeful elect of the house of David. Come Yesharala and abide the mouth. We got next, Lord willing. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom, shalom, brother fishers, fishers of the hopeful elect. Shalom, fishers of the hopeful elect. They were hiding your channel. But I found it and I shared a couple of your lessons. The devil was shadow banning your whole channel. Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, and the Bad Babao. Shalom.